Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. So today we're going to be doing a couple of interesting techniques. The first is from Unity Stamp Company where they showed me a way to resist on the edges with white paint and the other is using some plumber supplies. I hope you'll stay tuned. So the stamp set I'm going to be using is called all cylinders and it's got an old Mustang convertible for those of you who don't know my husband Rich is my editor and my music man and he has an old Mustang convertible that looks like this his is called candy apple red I don't know exactly what that is but it's apparently a well-known color it's a metallic red so I want to replicate his car as much as I possibly can so my plan is that I'm going to stamp out that and then there's a really cute sentiment right here that says hello handsome and I thought that was perfect for him in the same stamp set and here's the Mustang so we're going to be stamping that on our white uh, layer once it's dry but before I do that I want to do another technique and that is with this Cuddlebug diamond plate folder by Provocraft. If you can see it, it looks like tire marks. But I didn't want to just do it. I wanted to make it so it really stood out. So I have this plumber's electrical tape. It's already backed with a plastic backing. It's kind of hard to work with for people like me, but here's kind of how I mastered a little, well, mastered, that's kind of a stretch of a term if you know me. Um, this is how I kind of figured out how to use it. I only un, un, uh, what do you call that? Take the backing off oh, already. Already I'm at DEFCON 1 or 5 or whatever the worst one is. Um, like I said, mastered is really a stretch. But okay, so I'm going to put this up against the edge. So you're going to put it so that you have that over your edge. You're going to go the whole length of your paper. And then I'm going to take it back up put my backing on it so that when I cut it I don't mess up my scissors and then I'm going to just use I'm going to use my uh, Tim Holtz little snips that I love and I could do this from the back but I'm going to do it from the front I think I can see the paper well enough if I chopped off a corner we'll just have to make it rounded you know how it goes and then you can see I didn't get it on straight because, like I said, mastering was a little bit of a stretch of a term. I'm going to put my paper back over it, and this time I am going to cut it from the back. Okay. This is very sharp on the edges. I'll tell you that much. Uh, so be very careful when you're using this this um, plumber's, I, I think it's called plumber's tape. Um, I bought mine at just a regular hardware store, and... Um, I got another roll of it for a quarter at a garage sale, which really made me happy because I think this roll was like four or five dollars. And it's going to last a, a long, long time, but um, I thought it was perfect for this idea. I think it was Lindsay the Frugal Crafter who I saw use this a hundred years ago. Of course it was her. I love her. I'm not going to go all the way to the center. I'm only going to do a little piece that goes up about that far because this is going to be a waste um, of this material if I do it the whole, you know, in this section because this isn't going to be showing. I'm going to have that under my layer. So there's no point in doing anything. As I said, it's better to just um, put it where I'm going to get bang for my buck, right? That's my thought process. Hope you agree. Okay. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to take a bone folder. This is mine. This one is made by Fiskars. I really like it because of its shape. This little, almost like a club, makes it a lot easier for me to hold on to it and to navigate with it. Just saying. And I'm just going to run it all over this tape because it's 
kind of like aluminum foil. Oh, and that's what I wanted to tell you. If you don't want to buy this, you could try just uh, putting aluminum foil over your paper, your cardstock, and running that through your embossing folder. But we're doing it this way because I wanted to um, show you how to use this tape. All right, so that's what mine looks like right now. It doesn't look really great. Keeping in mind, we're only going to be using the outer edges of the design. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine in my embossing folder and I'll be right back. So we've got our piece of tire treaded silver paper out of our uh, embossing folder. I hope you can see that. I hope there's not too much of a glare on it. I apologize if there is. I'm thinking I'm going to try some of this Pico um, and Irresistible I, it's a, it's kind of a shiny black, and I thought what I wanted to do is kind of go around the edges of my um, tire tread and see if I could make it look a little bit distressed, like a car had run over it. So I thought what I would do, hopefully I can get some of this out. This is just a, uh, the baby bib has nothing, no water, nothing on it. I just wanted to have it look kind of distressed, but almost dirty. You know what I mean? Like a car would leave. At least that car would leave, let me tell you. Dollops. Woo. Hopefully. Hopefully that'll work. Alright. Run it around this edge. I think that the one of the main reasons I wanted to do this step is because I think it'll highlight these tread marks. Letting it sit on that one edge really made it stick better, too. I know, hot mess. I know what you're thinking. I, if you think I, that I don't think the same things you think when I'm making these things, of course I do. I know when my projects look horribly frightening. We're there. We're at the, it's scary and I don't know what I'm going to do phase. No, I know I'm going to do. I just don't, I don't know um, if this is going to look the way I really want it to. But let me let that dry. I think it does look kind of cool, though. I'm happy with it. Even though it does look like a hot mess, I am happy with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the edges of our cardstock with white paint cheap acrylic white paint. Uh, if you have those little pots that you got with one of those acrylic painting kits, that'll work too. I saw them use this in a video by Unity Stamps, and those are the stamps we're using today, so I thought I might as well give it a whirl and show you guys what I learned in a video, and we'll all go along and figure it out together. So, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your white paint, and you want it to be uh, the same color or close to the color of your paper. So if your paper is not white, don't use white. Use whatever color your paper is. And I'm just going to use a wide paintbrush. And you want a paintbrush that's going to leave some marks. So if you have a wider paintbrush like this, you're going to end up with marks on your paper. And I'm just going to go around the edge with my with my white paint. Hopefully you can see the extent of what I'm painting maybe a half an inch in. I'm using watercolor paper because I'm going to do some watercoloring on it and I wanted to make sure that my watercoloring didn't ruin the paper I was using. You want lines, you know, brush some line marks in. Don't don't be afraid to not have brush strokes. So if you if you're thinking to yourself, "Geez, I don't you know, I don't I don't like that little mark I left behind." If you don't like the mark, make a different mark, but you want marks. You with me? I hope so. It'll dry quickly, but that white paint will act as a resist. When I did it the first time, what happened was I painted my white paint, then I stamped my car. What I didn't realize was I stamped my car into my white paint on the front and the back. So it made it so that it was really hard to get the uh, watercolor and the alcohol markers and everything else I tried to stick to the car. And then my, um, my distressing didn't go the way I wanted it to. So clearly my advice when you're making this is to make sure that your stamp is smaller than the image, the area 
that you're going to be painting. I really like the effect, but as I said, I completely messed mine up. So I'm redoing. Not a problem because I, I want it to be right. I want it to look good and I wanted to show you the the idea. The the paint wicks away basically anything you try to put on it and then um, the area around it absorbs it. So then in those brush strokes that I talked about, hopefully you can see that. In those brush strokes where it, the edge of the brush is right there, you can it it helps so that what, you, what you're distressing comes into those brush marks and leaves kind of a distressed look there too that's different than on the rest of the card. I like it and um, I probably, when I did this one, I probably did way too much. What I did this time was I went in far less. I only am in maybe at the most a half of an inch all the way around and so I know that my car is going to fit in the, in the middle really well and I can still trim this down to fit on the card that I needed to fit on but you know the image of the the edges will probably be cut off but still some of this white will remain and I'm going to use my misty people have been asking me uh, if I prefer the stamp perfect over the misty and my answer is I use whichever one is is um, easily accessible because when I move things around in my stack that's what happens is one becomes more accessible than the other and I'm going to be using Versafine Onyx Black Ink. If you don't know my story about this, I don't like the container that that comes in. So uh, one of my viewers told me that I should buy one of these blanks, they call them, I think. Or they call them custom blends from Distress Inks. And it has no ink in it. And all you do is you get the reinker for Versafine Onyx Black. And you just put your reinker in there and you're good to go. Of course, um... It's a little bit smaller pad than the VersaFine pads, but I don't care. The lid on that VersaFine pad slaps back and forth, and I used to get ink all over me and everything around me, and it made me crazy. If you didn't uh, watch my review on the Tim Holtz stamp platform, I'll give you a recap of it. I bought it because I wanted to make sure that I gave you what I felt was uh, an honest Im impression from someone who has wrist and arm hand strength problems and I stamped with it a few times and I started getting really tired. By the time I'd stamped maybe five images on that uh, box card of the county fair, that's where the review is by the way, um, when I stamped maybe five images, I was exhausted. And I have to say, I've never had that problem with either the Misty or the Stamp Perfect. And unfortunately, the Stamp Perfect is no longer available in the U.S. I'm not sure if it's available anywhere else in the world. If you are from somewhere else in the world and it is available where you are, will you let us know so we know if it is available somewhere outside of the U.S.? Because um, it is a, a lighter weight tool, and of the three of them, the Stamp Perfect, the Misty, and the Tim Holtz, it is the, I think, the easiest one to press through the lid on. With that being said, it's not as sturdy as the Misty, but um, the Misty comes at a price. And unfortunately, some people can't afford it. And if you can't afford it, and you live somewhere where the Stamp Perfect is available, then I would suggest you look into it. Okay, I just wiped that off with my um, absorber. If you've never seen this, it's part of a big towel that my husband uses to clean his Mustang. And I just cut off a little section of it. And if you don't wet it, it's hard as a rock. I'll show you. I'll show you the other half of my piece. There's my other piece. See how it's so hard. All you have to do is wet it and it, it becomes really nice and soft and manageable. But um, I just want to show you that in case you wanted to buy one and you thought, man, this thing's a piece of crap. The first time I used it, I hated it because I didn't get it wet enough, and so it wasn't, it was kind of squeaky and hard to manage. But then um, the second time I used it, I loved it, and I continue to love it. I keep it in a jar, and I showed that in a video about how I, how I maintain that. I like it. It works for me. And because Rich already needed it for his car, it was no extra money to pay for it. I think it's like $9 and something at Walmart in the car, obviously, in the car section. And, um... It doesn't leave any lint behind, and I just keep it in this little container that I can keep a little bit of um, 
you know, the lip has a little bit of gap so that water or air gets in. And then I also keep, this is a Tim Holtz Rub It Scrub It, so if I get a stamp really dirty, I can clean that. And then all I do is put a little bit of my stamp cleaner, my homemade stamp cleaner that is, uh, let's say, 10 teaspoons water for one teaspoon of baby shampoo, but that's a lot. It's more like I fill the whole... I fill this whole sprayer up with water and then I put in maybe a tablespoon, that's probably too much, yeah, probably a tablespoon of um, baby shampoo. And I get my baby shampoo at the Dollar Tree. So now you've got the whole scoop on that. I've told it a million times, but if you're new to my channel, I like to make sure you hear all the scoop. Here is how you want to make sure you do this. You're going to heat this up before you use it. Heating it up is going to make this process much, much better for you. If you hold your paper in the air like this and you get an angle on it, that will give the air a chance to kind of blow through the card. And if it does, then it heats it faster and it's able to change the powder into the shiny stuff. As soon as the section gets shiny, move your tool on. I bought these watercolors because Lindsay the Frugal Crafter had them and you know if she buys something I'm inclined to buy them too. Um, I found mine on Amazon for $17.99. The ones she bought on Amazon were $19.99 but apparently after she um, bought hers then Amazon Prime found um, you know a little less expensive system. Then I was on AliExpress and I saw the exact same watercolors there for um, I think they're $14.39 or $13.49, something like that. And what I typed in was 42 watercolors because the only word on here is superior. Now mine comes with a p mine came with this weird piece of foam here. This is supposed to be your mixing tray, and it there's like um there's a piece of Velcro that holds it in. I have no idea why mine has that. Lindsay's doesn't have that and I asked her about it and she said she had no idea why they would have that but I also it also comes with a nice water brush this is the water brush it comes with it's harder to squeeze than other water brushes I'll tell you that much and the other thing that I'm going to tell you about these is that the colors although they give you the colors I'm going to put this up as high as I can although they give you all these colors here's the problem you can see on this the gold color, which is the lightest one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's how you have to find it, is you have to go across the top, and then the next row is six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine. I think is how it works. But I, I couldn't deal with that. <clears throat> Swatching for me is, is crucial. So what I did instead was, these I think are their mixing plates. So what I did instead is I took a sticker and I swatched this is the bottom the bottom tier. I swatched it first. It's this first section. Then this is my next one and I swatched it next. Then there's a next an a, an extra piece here. So then in this section I swatched this piece, then this piece, and then I ran out of space. So I kind of filled in the reds are on this page and the yellows are on the bottom of this page. So I I kind of had to come up with my own weird system, but that was the only way I could figure it out. I don't normally mix colors on my watercolors anyway, so it wasn't a big issue for me. So I just thought I would tell you that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use our red, and the red I'm using is the very bottom one. It's the dark red, and I like it much, very much, and it's also kind of a deeper color, I'd say, you know, as reds go, because some reds are brassier than others, and this one is not. Um, I just sprayed on a ceramic tile, and I'm just going to wet my brush on that because I was having trouble getting my getting this brush, like I said, to squeeze it. I was having trouble with that. So I'm going to go into this red, and I'm only going to do the car. <laughs> Now we're going to go in with some silver. Now I'm going to use, um, this is a chalk marker. It's called Chocola. 
and when I played with it on the other Mustang, it was way too bold. So I'm going to scribble this one out like I did the red. No, yeah, and get a and not have such an intense silver if I can avoid it. Using a black water-based marker. Again, water brush. I'm trying not to get close to those seats if I can avoid it. The one I just painted silver. This is a back seat. Now, his car, as I said, is a, col a color called Candy Apple Red. And what that means is it's really um, metallic. So the closest I could come to it in metallics was this iron oxide and the Ken Oliver metals. It's not red. It's an orange. But um, when I played with it yesterday, it did make this red pop enough that it didn't come off as seriously orange. So we're going to go back over our red. set our car first so that in case the ground or the sky touches our car it's not gonna move the colors hopefully all right we're gonna go with I'm gonna go into my lighter blues if I can As in almost all my projects, everything hits a hot mess phase and then it gets better. But right now, we're hot messing it right, right here. I'm going to dry that up a little bit and see what we can get to go with our next step. We're going to be cutting this down significantly. Alright, now we're going to go on to the stage where we're going to do our distressing. And I'm going to use this Hickory Smoke ink and one of these daubers. And when I did this yesterday, my ink, I don't think it, I, I don't think that my, I think my ink pad needs re-inked. When you do this, the edges of that white paint are going to resist. If you wanted to, you could take your cloth, and I just put a little bit of my um, watery sudsy solution on it. You could go around this edge. Now this is if you're going to keep it, keep the edges, and I'm not, but I'm going to show you how you could do this. You can go around your edges like this, and it's going to take off everything because that white paint is there acting as a buffer below it. See that? So if you wanted this to look like a, like a white framed like a white outlined card, you definitely could do that. I'm, sh I'm just showing you this part so that if you want to do it, you can. Okay, I wanted to show you, I use this Avery L die that's, that makes these dotted tags, and they're really cool, but I wanted my Hello Handsome to be inside the red one. So what I did was I uh, put it in my paper trimmer. Hopefully you can see this. I put a little bit of washi tape on it, and I cut the left side off. So now I'm just going to take the left side out, take the washi tape off, put it on the right side on the dotted by the dotted line. Cut that piece right there. And then we have basically what looks like the same thing only smaller. So now I'm going to cut the inside down by just trimming off that end and then I'm going to cut off the V, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use my snips and I'm just going to go 
on the inside of my dots. Hopefully you can see this. like that, and hopefully it'll fit within our red piece. It looks like this. See how frisky that is? See, it's still too, too long, so all I have to do is snip off a little bit off of that end. Like that. And then we can put it inside like this. Just like that. Voila! Yeah, I know. didn't sound right when I say it. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of Tombow Mono Aqua Glue on the inside of, of our white piece. And then we'll attach it to our red piece. Make sure you get a lot on the points because those will have a hard time sticking down. They won't want to is what I'm saying. They'll fight you. They'll be fighting you. As I always do, I write all of the information down below. I give you step-by-step -step instructions in writing below the video where it says more information. So if you ever have a question about how I do something or what something is that I used, look there. You should be able to find it because I try to explain the whole process below. I know most people don't do that, but I feel like I should do it because the closed captioning that YouTube uses isn't the greatest. So I would prefer to have something that works that you know that you understand as you're reading it. So that's why I do my own. Not saying really that you can understand what I'm saying, but you know, whatever. We're going to use our ruler and I'm going to put brads on this piece and I want to have my brads about a quarter inch from the edge. So I'm going to go to the top and the bottom. Okay, so I made my base, which is uh, eight and a half inches tall by five and a half inches across. So then you score it four and a quarter. So it's called an A2 size card. I'm going to use my stamper on the back. I had this made by a company called Stamp Panda. And uh, I put the information below on how to get how you'd make it because it is a little complicated to make just because um, I had to change an address label that they use into that and um, sometimes you have to I used a coupon from Groupon and I mean it's kind of it, it was kind of an ordeal to to get it done but it I saved myself a lot of money. I think in the end it ended up being about $20 and it started out being 40 something. Okay, so now I've got my car adhered. These are brads that I poked through and I'm sorry I lost that on the video. I think I'm going to have to put some wet glue behind that because um, this doesn't want to stick to anything as it's um, sticking on the background which is super uh, textured and there's inks and dyes and paints and everything else on there so I'm just going to make sure that everything adheres and stays adhered by putting some wet glue on the back just because it'll work a lot better in the end let me attach this piece to my card base because I have some um, tear tape on it and I want to make sure we just want to make sure that everything stays attached if we can. Now put this one on. I played with my sentiment looking at it on the front of the card and I decided that my sentiment will look a lot better in my head in the inside of the card and since the card is red and the sentiment is red what I did was I took a black marker and I just outlined, I don't know if you can see that, I just outlined the edges in black. That way it'll, it'll stand out and you'll see it better against red. It's the exact same color as the card and I just didn't want to have it get lost inside. I could put it up on dimensionals but I wanted this to be a kind of a manly card even though it says hello handsome. Rich will appreciate that because he is handsome and he thinks his car is handsome. So all in all it works. There's that. And then I'm going to press on this again. I want to hold this in place just to get it so that the wet glue holds it down. The other glue I don't think is going to hold and that was tear tape and tear tape normally does hold but you've got 
like as I said, all kinds of texture underneath and uh, the paint and the the different products I use to hold the or to make the embossing folder look um, weathered manly. I you know even though my car is shimmery, I think I might go over it with a little bit of Wink of Stella or a Wink of Stella ish product. So let me grab that and I'll be right back. My Wink of Stella ish product is made by um, Spectrum Noir. Ooh. Of course, I already moved that red up there where I didn't want it to. And um, it does a nice job of making things very, very glittery. The one thing I will tell you about videos, though, oh, I just lost my light right there. Um, the one thing I'll tell you about videos and the lighting in videos is you'll never see glitter or glittery items as glittery as they are in person. They might look a little bit glittery but um, y you'll be surprised at the difference when you see them in person so I need to I'm going to show you this too here's the other thing once you use this Wink of Stella look at how much is on my brush you see that red that came off so when you use it you really want to clean it off afterwards because if, y if it got anything on it it will hold it on there and I think I'm going to put a little cloud in there all I'm doing is I'm trying to cut what looks like that, kind of like a part of a cloud. Don't want any points on this, you know, in case you have a little bit of a point. And I'm going to do mine like this. Here is what the, ch the chip brushes look like when I get them. I take the top off, obviously, plastic part, and then I take my snips and then I hold the bristles so that they don't move and I cut them to make a straight line you know that those hairs are everywhere right they're not just on that piece of paper then I'm going to take some of the white and a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to brush into my white so I get some white on there then I'm going to brush into it on the paper because I don't want my brush to be super, super white. Because all we're going for here is a little bit of a white. Just trying to build in some clouds. If you don't want your sky to be as dark as you have it when you're doing something like this, this is a good way to build in just a little bit of color, a little bit of whiteness, I mean. I'm just moving it down a little bit, and this time I'm brushing less. And then I'm going to move them a little bit like that. That could be either hills, sky, it can be just about anything, but I like that look because then it gives my background a little bit more definition. What do you think? You like it? Maybe not. And then if you want to make the area around your card a little bit lighter, we can just brush into it a little bit of the white. I, you notice I never added more white to my brush. I, I brushed off a lot of it onto the paper. So there you go. That's our Mustang. I hope that you enjoyed it, that you learned a couple techniques, even though one of them really didn't get applied in the end, that you give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.